We've been playing a ton of one of the most anticipated games, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and we've even finished the story to get a good understanding of the different gameplay systems, the way the game's played, and what it's all about. This is because, luckily enough, Psy Games has given us access to Relink and has sponsored this video so we can bring you guys this ultimate beginner's guide, which wraps together all of the things we wish we knew sooner, so you can walk away with a good understanding of what to expect, what the game is about, and how Grand Blue Fantasy Relink plays. Looking at a few comments out there online, some people don't quite have the right understanding of what this game is. So, with us being massive fans of action RPGs, hunting games, and multiplayer RPGs, this is one that we wouldn't want ourselves to miss out on or you. So, what exactly is Grand Blue Fantasy Relink? Well, it's an action RPG with a bunch of completely different playable characters, crazy and spectacular boss fights, action packed story quests, and even multiplayer end game game raid style quests. This is a game that ourselves and many fans out there have been waiting literal years to play and sink our teeth into. The world of Grand Blue Fantasy is very fleshed out and rich with tons of lore because of its roots originating in the successful and established mobile games. There's a variety of incredibly designed characters, floating islands to explore, different races of citizens, and giant monsters known as primal beasts. But having knowledge of the previous games is in no way needed to fully enjoy the story or characters of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. This is because the game eases you into your journey with a handful of charismatic characters which are all part of your skyfaring crew as you'll be flying from island to island on your own airship known as the Grand Cypher. There's also the in-game glossary to explain anything that you might feel you're missing out on. You see, the world of Grand Blue Fantasy has been forsaken by the gods. It's a place where islands of all shapes and sizes float in the sky among the clouds. Long in the past, a people known as the Astrals attempted to seize control of the world with their own overwhelming might, but thanks to the citizens of the skies, they were repelled and thus a new era of peace was ushered in. You will start as the main character which can be played as either a male or female version called Gran or Jeter, and your initial goal is to find the legendary island of the Astrals called Estelucia. You'll be travelling with your crew as well as Lyria, a girl with a mysterious power to control the primal beasts. These travels will bring you to the Zega Grande Sky Dome, which is where our story unfolds, and you'll soon learn more about about the primal beasts which were created by the astrals and have godlike power. Some of these primal beasts went into a slumber after the astrals were repelled, long before the events of Relink. With the astrals no longer around, some primals began to awaken and behave erratically. So, we will now need to help resolve the problem of rampaging primals terrorizing the skies. There's characters to meet along the way and even unlockable characters to either play as yourself or unlock as party members as you progress through the main story. But this brings us to understanding how the story, questing, and side quests function in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. The main story will ease you through the world as you unlock new areas, uncover the mysteries of the primal beasts, and meet plenty of characters both friend and foe along the way. You can expect around 20 hours just from the main story content alone, and this isn't including the additional story content, such as character-specific quests called Fate Episodes, where you learn more about those characters as well as improve their stats by completing them. After advancing roughly one hour into the game, you will then unlock your first town hub area. This is a peaceful area with access to various shops in the game, such as the Knickknack Shack and the Blacksmith, which have their own functions to further your character's progression and get more powerful things like weapons, sigils, or materials, which we'll go over soon. One of the easiest ways to understand how the world works is that you have this hub area with a variety of vendors and the quest counter, which lets you embark on a variety of different missions, either solo with NPCs or in multiplayer online. The way that you group and quest online is similar to the monster hunting format, which if you've played one of them before, we know that many people really enjoy it. The town hubs are also full of secret materials and quests, so exploring and having a look around in these areas might just be worth it if you want to get some extra goodies. There's also side quests to pick up in towns, and these are like your more traditional and optional quests to complete, both during and after the main story, which include collecting certain materials or defeating certain enemy types, in exchange for a variety of rewards including money, mastery points to enhance your characters, and materials, which can be used for a variety of purposes to further increase your character's power. If battling sounds too daunting for you, there's also the assist mode accessibility options that function for the main story on story difficulty, easy 
through to extreme difficulty quests and the fate episodes. There's the first assist mode that allows you to enjoy battling while simply mashing X, and then there's the full assist mode that lets you only need to focus on moving in the game and the rest will be done for you. There's no disadvantage to using these modes, so they're there as an excellent accessibility option for those in need of it. Finally, you have the quest counter, and this is where you can undertake quests of different varieties from boss fights to horde battles and even timed survival quests. Each of these different types of quests will offer different rewards from experience to mastery points and materials and more to enhance the different aspects of your character. These quests are independent of the main story and they offer hours of additional content and it can be played solo or in multiplayer with up to three other people with a total party size of four players online. You can create or join other people's multiplayer sessions and get hunting together to power up your characters via this quest counter. It's worth noting that you can complete these quests while doing the main story, but after you finish the final chapter of the main campaign, the real fun will begin because then you unlock higher difficulty quests and missions, as well as special prerequisite quests that have this symbol on them. These are kind of like urgent quests that you can complete to unlock higher difficulties and extra quests to do. So when you combine together the main story, the side quests and the quest counter for both single and multiplayer quests, as well as the fate episodes and more, you'll have over a hundred hours of content to complete and much more if you want to play and max out every character. And speaking of characters, there are loads of different characters available for you to unlock and play, each with their own totally unique playstyle, abilities and mechanics. So there will definitely be a style of character for everyone, whether you like fast hitting melee characters, long range shooters, magical casters, slow and hard hitting melees and more. You'll start off with your main character, Gran or Jita, depending on if you picked male or female, as well as your crew of the Grand Cypher. But there's a bunch of additional characters that you can unlock as you play through the main story and complete specific quests to unlock crewmate vouchers. You can then pick these additional characters to recruit into your crew and there are various sources you can get these vouchers such as completing the main story chapters and other objectives. We found out by saving your crewmate vouchers and redeeming them later in the game even after finishing the story, both the level and unlocked masteries will scale higher with you. This means if you save a couple of your tickets to unlock a character after the story, they will unlock at a higher level with more masteries unlocked, saving you some time farming. Gran or Jita will be your main character in the story, which you can pick either or and change at any time. They're a wind character with access to fast attacking combos, powerful charged attacks, and a adept arts that increase the power of your abilities. They're a good all-rounder for any situation, and they're a great starting point with access to offensive, defensive, healing, and support skills. But you will also have the initial crew of the Grand Cypher unlocked at the start of the game for you. This will include Catalina, a knight whose duty is to protect Lyria. She's a water melee character with fast attacks and a magical sword. She has a variety of offensive and supportive skills, making her another good all-round character. With her support skill called Blue Radiance, she can build a gauge and then summon the primal beast Ares to join her in combat, which also powers up her attacks and abilities. There's also Rackham, who's the helmsman of our airship. He's a fire ranged attacker with two guns that allow him to cover both close and long range. He's perfect for targeting enemy weak points, as you can shoot timed shots for extra damage and even three round bursts. You'll also be building up a heat gauge as you shoot and have access to all kinds of powerful ranged abilities. Eo is your crew's first mage and she has the light element. With access to a variety of different long ranged offensive elemental magic and recovery magic, she can also create mystic vortex orbs when you land fully charged spells, which you can then use to do a charged up magical attack that is super powerful. Eugen is also part of your crew and he's an experienced Skyfarer. He's a ranged earth character who basically has a sniper rifle, but can also fight in hand-to-hand -hand melee. With him, you can manually shoot enemies while in sniper vision and deal lots of area of effect damage with his skills. The final starting crew member is Rosetta. She's a dark character that is the incarnation of the primal beast Rose Queen. With her unique magic, she can summon roses on the battlefield that will automatically attack enemies, allowing her to control the field, deal damage, and buff allies. But outside of your initial crew, you also have the additional characters that you can unlock, so let's go through them. Siegfried is an earth character who wields a large greatsword and has the blood of a dragon within him. 
You can deal additional damage with timed inputs on your attacks. You have skills that buff yourself, debuff the enemy, and even countering incoming attack skills. This is a great character if you like big, meaty chops. Zeta is a fire character with a spear who also excels in aerial combat. She's part of the Society, which are a group that hunt the primal beasts. She has fast attacks that can chain together into constant aerial hits, and even has access to counter incoming attacks. She is fantastic if you like to be up in the sky and dealing constant damage. Charlotta is a light character who uses a great sword but in a unique way. She's the captain of the Order of Holy Knights and deals rapid hits that enhance her attacks as her sword glows. But she's also able to block incoming attacks with perfectly timed attacks of her own. She has good rapid hitting skills, counters and buffs. Gandagoza is a fire character who's the founder of the Eternal Rage style. He uses his fists and gauntlets to attack and you'll be building up rage to deal even more damage and you can time your attacks to enhance your fists. With lots of damage inflicting skills, a counter and buffing skills, Gandagoza is a powerful force in battle. Next up is Fairy, a light character who's actually a ghost that accidentally summoned the primal beast of death. With access to her ghost pets and using a whip, she can use her pets and her whip to do close and medium range damage, with the more pets that she has summoned on the battlefield further boosting her damage. She has lots of buffs, debuffs, and summons, so she's a very unique and interesting character to play. Next is Narmea, a dark Saws woman who comes from a long line of martial arts masters, but she's combined this knowledge with magic. And she can switch between two stances, one for speed and the other for range, which will also change her attacks and skills, and then she can further enhance her skills by landing specific attacks that grant her butterflies. Lancelot is a water character that leads the Order of the White Dragons. He uses dual swords to do rapid attacks, which then become coated in ice the more attacks you deal, which further increases the damage you deal with those attacks. You have a special dodge that can lead into combos, and great damage and self-buffing skills. Vayne is another water character, but this one is the Vice Captain of the Order of the White Dragons. He uses a halberd to deal wide sweeping attacks that build up and then consume his beatdown gauge to power up his combos. His attacks when per perfectly timed, can also block incoming foes attacks, and he has a lot of self buffing skills as well as powerful multi hit or sweeping damaging attacks. Percival is a fire knight known as the Lord of Flames. He uses his fire and ability to control and enhance his attacks and deal uninterruptible charged hits. With constant damaging skills and burning, he's great at dishing out that fire damage. Cagliostro is an earth mage that founded alchemy in the Sky Realm. Interestingly, this character is virtually immortal as they can replace their body parts with new vessels. They transmute all kinds of weapons as they do their combo attacks and use magic skills to recover allies, deal damage, and control the battlefield. Yudara is a wind sword master who was long ago very famous but now has been forgotten. He is small but he deals super fast rapid attacks with access to counters, shockwaves, and more as he enhances his attacks by building up triple shroud marks from combo finishers. Vasaraga is a dark warrior similar to Zeta in that he's part of the society, the group that hunts down the primal beasts. He's a contractor to his special weapon known as the Great Scythe Grinoth. He builds additional attack and defense as he lands attacks to fill up his gauge, but he can also dish out high amounts of stun, damage, and consume and recover his own health through his skills. Now that is a lot of characters, but there is additional characters coming in the future in DLC updates and more to be found. In addition to this, when you finish the main story, you can unlock customization, which lets you change the appearance and color scheme of these characters, so you can make them a bit more unique to you when you play online. But these characters are more than just their appearance and abilities. There's also a very in-depth progression system that allows you to make your character more powerful and customize them to your liking and preference. Each character has a level that will increase their power up to level 100. However, you will also want to collect, forge, and upgrade weapons. Each weapon has its own level and trait, so you're going to want to upgrade and uncap these weapons to increase your combat effectiveness, especially if you play the higher difficulty content. When it comes to upgrading and uncapping these weapons, you will need materials. Within the blacksmith menu, you can actually go over to the material and add it to your wishlist. Then when you go to the quest board, you can search for quests via treasure, which lets you select items on your wishlist and only quest 
quests that drop those materials will appear. This makes farming so much easier, and a quick tip from us is that you might want to focus on one or two characters at a time, otherwise you will run out of materials very quickly. But there is more, you also have masteries. These are like your skill trees with tons of stat upgrades, new skills to get, buffs, and effects that enhance your character with both an offensive, defensive, and the collection tree. The collection tree allows you to unlock additional stats for your character based on how far you level up their different weapons. The offensive tree includes attack focus skills and stats, while the defensive tree increases your health, unlocks support skills, and general things that keep you alive longer. After all of this you have sigils. These are additional gear items that grant you levels to a massive variety of traits and they come in all different rarities, with higher rarities offering higher levels in those traits. Sigils can be upgraded depending on their rarity and are vital to powering up your character and tailoring them to your specific playstyle and build. Sigils can be obtained as quest rewards, as drops, and even from the knickknack shack for vouchers or materials. If you're looking to level up faster, we recommend keeping an eye out for the fast learning sigil. This will give you an additional percentage increase to your XP, so it's pretty good for leveling. Next, let's talk about the combat, because in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, it's very easy to pick up and get started, but there's a lot of different mechanics and systems to master. Each character is very different, so when you try someone new, you're going to need to master new timings, attack combos, skills, gauges, and mechanics depending on who you play. The training room is a great place to learn, and you'll be taken here automatically after unlocking a new character, or you can go to the Grand Cypher and enter it with whoever you want. Depending on what platform you're playing on, you will have your attack input with square or X, as well as your character's unique attack with triangle or Y. Most characters will engage their combo strings by doing square or X, meanwhile some characters can use their unique attack, triangle or Y, to input into their combo but it does depend on which character you're playing. For example, Gran can combo together with square and finish with triangle for a powerful combo finisher, or simply charge his triangle unique attack on its own to do its own special move. Meanwhile, another character like Siegfried can use timed inputs on his square attacks to enhance them and then use his triangle unique attack to close distance between enemies without getting interrupted. So for each character their combos and unique attack will be different. We recommend checking the command list of the character you're playing to see and learn their movesets because it's very different from character to character, especially considering that some characters are melee, others are ranged and others are magic focused. On top of this, you have guarding, dodging, and perfect guarding and dodging. Guarding will let you block incoming attacks up to a limit, whereby you will then be guard broken and become dazed. So, it's best used intermittently with time between to recover. Dodging, however, lets you completely avoid taking damage and can be done multiple times, but if you do this too many times in a row, it will leave you open to attacks as you recover. Perfect guarding and dodging is a thing that's unlocked via the mastery tree. But by timing it perfectly on an incoming attack, when you guard, you will build stun on nearby enemies. Meanwhile, for a perfect dodge, if you time it perfectly on an incoming attack, you will gain temporary invincibility, which lets you avoid any incoming damage for a couple seconds. You should also be aware of link attacks. As you attack foes, you build up a blue gauge. This is called the stun gauge. Once the stun is full, you can then do a link attack. This is a special attack which you can execute with a party member, and you can continue doing your combo by immediately attacking after executing the link attack. By doing these link attacks and other things like Skybound Arts and Chain Bursts, you will raise the party's link level up to 100%, whereby then you can execute an even more powerful link attack called Link Time to gain buffs and slow down time. You will regenerate your health, have increased attack and shorter cooldowns thanks to certain mastery unlocks, making this a very powerful thing in battle against stronger enemies and bosses. Next, you will also want to learn about Skybound Arts. These are like your character's unique attack that deals high damage and can be chained together with other allies in both solo and multiplayer. You will have the SBA gauge under your health bar and you will need to fill this in order to execute your Skybound Art. This gauge will fill up when you deal damage or take damage as well as when your allies execute their Skybound Art. You can assign whether or not your NPC allies will automatically use their Skybound Arts or hold them, but personally, I found that auto was pretty good as they usually executed them when a full chain burst was ready and that's what you want to aim for. A full chain burst is when you and your allies execute a skybound art one after another. 
you can build the chain from two to three and then finally a full chain burst with all four members of your party. This will increase your character's link level and the elemental effect of the full chain burst is determined by the first character that executes their skybound art. So you want to save up your SPA gauge and use it when everyone in the team is ready and has theirs full and make sure the first person to do it matches the elemental weakness of the boss. Next, it's going to be handy to understand the different damage types and colors so you know what's happening when you hit. You can see here that the different colors of the damage number will depend on how you're dealing damage. There's a difference between hitting just an enemy normally, matching their weakness when you hit them, hitting them when they're guarding, taking damage yourself, and taking damage yourself while you are guarding. So taking note of these different damage colors is going to be handy. Basically, try and play a character whose element matches the elemental weakness of an enemy, but also also play a character that you enjoy. On top of this, there are a lot of status effects, buffs, and ailments, which come in all different types. Many of the character's skills will grant yourself or your whole team different buffs, put debuffs on enemies, and some skills can also apply restrictive status ailments on enemies, causing a variety of different beneficial effects for your team. Some will slow down enemy monsters, others will limit their movement or even paralyze them. Now here are a couple things to look out for when killing monsters. Some bosses will take different amounts of damage depending on where you attack them. So make sure to try hitting different areas of large monsters and bosses to see where is most effective. Critical hits, however, will always deal full damage, so building for a high critical hit chance can help mitigate where you attack. Additionally, you can further exploit enemy weakness locations with traits that increase your weak point damage. So if you like learning where the monster's weak points are and you're very good at sticking to them, this trait might be one to consider using on your sigils and weapons. Another thing to look out for is the boss's mode bar. As you deal damage to them, this will fill up. And once it's full, they will go into overdrive which makes them much more dangerous. Dangerous. During this, your damage will then deplete their gauge and once it's fully depleted, the boss will be broken, leaving them vulnerable for you to deal a lot of damage to them. Some bosses will also gain Bloodthirst. This is a buff that makes attacks against them, including Skybound Arts, highly ineffective. It's a temporary state, so while this is active, you might want to play defensively and save your offensive skills and Skybound Arts until after it ends. Some bosses have objects or body parts that can be broken, and this will yield you additional loot at the end, as well as change their behavior. Breaking parts is easier when you have higher stun power, so you might want to focus on sigils that grant additional stun power if you enjoy breaking off enemy parts for extra loot, and that stun power will help build up link attacks too. If you're ever confused about anything or you want to learn more about different mechanics of the game, you can also look in Lyria's journal, which has a ton of different tips and explanations of practically everything in the game. Remember, the game can be enjoyed both solo and in multiplayer. You can team up with three other people online for a total party size of four. So when you head to town, you can set up a multiplayer lobby at the quest counter, where your friends and other players online can then join you so you can embark out on a quest together. You can also join other players' lobbies through the quest counter so it's very easy to get into multiplayer quests. There's also stickers, quick chat options, and emotes that you can use to communicate with other players online. There's an absolute ton of these stickers and quick chat options, so there is something for every situation once you get used to them. But I have a question for you. Do you prefer to use stickers or text in games like this to communicate? I quite enjoy the stickers myself. Think of these stickers, emotes, and quick chat options as your way to easily communicate with people online, both in the town hub, but also out in the actual quests themselves. It's extremely fun in multiplayer because you can really synergize with other people's characters and builds to make a really good party comp. Particularly in the higher level end game content, you're going to need to have assigned roles with people bringing healing spells, perhaps sigils and other things to tank enemies, and of course your damage dealers so you can actually take the monster down. But it's also just a bunch of fun to hang out with someone in the actual town and drop some emotes together. You even have your own character profile which you can customize with your favorite character to play, a bio, what times you're available to play, and display a trophy to show off your achievements. So now hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, how it works, how it plays, all of the crazy characters available, and you're basically ready to jump in. We hope this helped you out, and if it did, hit that like button down below, and subscribe because we're going to have loads more Grand Blue Fantasy Relink content coming your way soon.